Well, good day. Uh, welcome uh, to Fix Your Eyes on Jesus. Let's get stuck into God's Word. Uh, today we're continuing to look at Jesus' teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and it's an interesting passage today. Now, it's only a small passage, and it's about the truth. And we live in strange times, don't we? I mean, perhaps it's always been this way, but there's a level at which we crave the truth. I mean, you look at the news uh, today in light of what's going on in the world, and people want to know how this began, how it came about, how it spread so fast. Uh, they want to know the truth. We cry out for it. And of course, uh, the conspiracy theories that fly around, all these things, they exist because people want to know the truth. But at another level, we're incredibly suspicious of anyone who claims to have the truth. The internet has given birth to all sorts of people who say, well, I think, dot, 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 and therefore it must be true. Simply sharing an opinion doesn't make it true, but that's the age in which we seem to live. I mean, and conspiracy theories, well, they exist because we know people lie. And in today's passage, Jesus highlights a crucial uh, aspect, a crucial characteristic of, of kingdom people, people who follow Jesus. They are people who speak the truth. And in particular, Jesus is talking uh, in the context of being faithful to your word. If, you're going, if you say you're going to do something, then do it. Uh, so let's pray, uh, and then we'll read uh, Matthew's, uh, Jesus' word in Matthew chapter 5 together. Let's pray. Uh, Lord Almighty, thank you for your word. Thank you that you are the God of truth. And as we read your truth here this morning, uh, Lord, we pray uh, that you help us to understand uh, the significance of your word, the way it's meant to impact our lives, how it points us to Jesus. And we pray that you would help us to fix our eyes on him, the one who is the truth. And so we pray this in his name. Amen. Well, let's read God's word together. So, Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 to 37. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. So once again, Jesus begins, you've heard that it was said. Uh, this teaching on uh, taking oaths comes from places like Leviticus 19, Numbers 30, Deuteronomy 23. Uh, there's a sense in which, it's, of course, it's, it's connected to uh, the commandment to not give false testimony, uh, and perhaps even uh, the third commandment, to not take the Lord's name in vain. When we talk about swearing by the Lord, to not take that in vain, to not swear by his name when you know full well that you will not keep your promise. Uh, but Jesus, once again, uh, pushes us beyond what we might have thought that command uh, was about. And he says, don't swear at all. I mean, if you have to swear by something in order to get people to trust that you are telling the truth, that you will keep your word, your promise, you know, what does that say about you? I mean, <laughs> as kids, we, we probably did it all the time. I know my my kids do it sometimes when I, you know, they've been caught out once and then they go, oh, dad, I swear, I swear I'll do it, I swear. 
I promise. But the reason that we might feel the need to do that is because in the past is we haven't kept our promise. Jesus is again getting to the heart of the issue. If you feel the need to swear in order to convince someone that you will keep your promise, it may be because you know in your heart that you're prone to not keeping your promise. Or perhaps even more sinister, you know full well that you intend not to keep your promise. <laughs> and verse 37 uh, is, is the key to this passage. You know, kingdom people should not need to swear by anything for their people who speak the truth. Their yes means yes, and their no means no. Right? The absolute reliability of one's word means, well, there's no need to swear. Um, Jesus condemns anything beyond simply speaking the truth as something that comes from the evil one, from Satan, because he's known as the father of lies, the father of deception. Why do we make promises, even knowing that we'll probably not be able to keep them or perhaps even have no intention of doing so? What's actually driving that in our lives? I mean, we've all done it uh, at some level, to some extent. I mean, sometimes circumstances do get in the way that might prevent us from doing something that we said we would do, and that's, that's fine. That's just life, in a sense. You know, circumstances do get change and, and get in the way of keeping a promise. But when we make a promise, and we feel the need to swear, perhaps because we know that it'll be hard to keep, or perhaps we, because we know that, actually, I don't, I'm not sure that I will be able to keep this promise. What, why? Why do we bother making the promise at all? Is it fear? Is it fear of not being accepted or loved? Do you want people to like you? Is it fear of perhaps not getting something you really want? And so you manipulate the situation and lie to get your way. Uh, Australian culture has been conditioned to distrust politicians because they're famous for lying. Uh, Bob Hawke, uh, Australian Prime Minister in the 80s, uh, will probably be remembered uh, through history for two things. One, drinking beer. And second, the promise that he made that he never kept. And I bet many of you know exactly what I'm about to say. No child, he said, will live in poverty by 1990. And it's been 30 years since 1990. And there are still plenty of kids on the street. We've been conditioned to distrust politicians. Why? Because they lie. Sometimes it may be just a bold-faced untruth, but it seems that the politician's bread and butter is to make promises because they want to woo the people, to get them on side. They make promises, but they don't deliver. Jesus wants us to be truth-telling people. People whose yes means yes and whose no means no. Because if people can't trust, if people can't trust us in the everyday situations when we all say, yeah, I'll get onto that. Oh, yeah, I'll help you. Yep, you can count on me. How will they trust us when we want to tell them the truth, the gospel truth? That Jesus is the Son of God come to earth to die for sinners. For people who failed to tell the truth. You know what? There's one person in all of Scripture. The whole Bible, there is one person who makes promise after promise after promise. And he never swears on anything. Not once. His yes is always yes. And his no is always no. And it's God. 
you know, and we just celebrated the big yes to all of God's promises last week. Easter. Jesus' death and resurrection is God's big stamp in the middle of history that says, See, I told you I would keep my promise. I told you that I would come to save you. God kept his promise for people like you and me. People who sometimes say yes, and it ends up being no. As you fix your eyes on Jesus today, reflect on how he is the big yes to all God's promises. And let that truth melt your heart. Let that truth shape your heart so that you become a person who means yes when they say yes. Become people who speak the truth as we seek to be people who point to the one who is the truth. Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Almighty, we give you thanks and praise for Jesus, that he is indeed the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, forgive us, we pray. We fail to be people who speak the truth. When we make promises we don't keep, when we lie for all sorts of reasons, sometimes, if not often, driven by fear, Lord, forgive us and help us to be truth people. People who speak the truth in love. People who reflect the one who is the truth. Lord, we thank you that you are the God who is utterly faithful. Who has kept all these promises. And Lord, we celebrated that last week. The amazing truth of Easter. The, the death and resurrection of Jesus that it is through him and his death on our behalf that our sins are forgiven, that it is through his resurrection that we have the certain hope of life ever everlasting. And all that is the big yes to the promise you made to save us. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the one who is the truth, so that we might be people who are truth speakers as we point people to him. And Lord, we just thank you and pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, see you tomorrow.